Uh, hello and welcome to the fifth episode of The Club. My name is Tom Alexander and this is our review show where we look at pretty much whatever the hell we want to. And this week, even though one of those famous YouTubers has already done a video, I said I was going to do one last week before he did, so I'm just going to kind of do it anyway. And this week we are looking at Prometheus. <laughs> are part of the very minuscule population that don't know what Prometheus is. Prometheus is directly Ridley Scott's most recent film and is essentially a, a prequel to Alien. Now I say essentially because there was this whole thing before the film came out saying was it a prequel, wasn't it a prequel, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's a prequel. It, 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 there's no other way to explain it. It is a prequel to Alien. Now I'm going to start by saying that this film is incredible. Um, open brackets, to a point, dash, I'll tell you more about that later, close brackets, yeah. But before I get into that, a little story. When I was in work the other day, I was talking to a man who, just before leaving, left me with the parting words of, don't go see Prometheus, it's boring. Now at this point, the film had been out for several days and I had actually seen it on the day of release. So I knew that this statement was coming from a man who had absolutely no idea what good cinema was when he saw it. And that he was probably the guy who thought that Transformers 3 was good, which is not, it's a pile of wank, but that's beside the point. And the reason that I feel such hatred for this guy is because he went into it thinking it was going to be this crappy alien flick that was explosion filled and was only going to last 90 minutes. Which in all fairness he's allowed to do, I'm not going to deny him his right to be an idiot. But the thing that really pisses me off is that when Prometheus didn't turn out to be this crappy, alien, gory, 90 minute explosion filled flick, his mind just turned off. The only thing that was probably running through his mind is, this is not what I wanted to see, therefore the film is bad. That of course was my interpretation and I don't even think the man knows what the word therefore means. So that just really got on my nerves. Now don't get me wrong, people are allowed to hate this film. I really love it, but I do see a lot of things that would ruin the film for a lot of other people. The only reason that I hate this guy and the percentage of the population that he represents is because he is so close-minded that he cannot appreciate art when he sees it. Okay, I promise, rant over about this guy now, time for my actual review thing. Now this movie came out in 3D, but don't let that put you off. It's not the crappy post-conversion Clash of the Titans Harry Potter 8 thing. It is the proper kind of 3D, the Avatar, the Toy Story 3. This has been made with 3D cameras, and my god, you can tell it. And the reason that I'm going on about the 3D is because just the visuals of this film are incredible. Years ago, when Ridley Scott was uh, filming Prometheus, he was told by a VFX guy that if you can do it live, do it live. You can clearly see in pretty much most of Ridley Scott's films that he has actually taken this on board. The sets in this film are just amazing. He hasn't gone down the CGI route and left everything to the post-production guys, but instead he had the majority of the sets built so that all the actors could actually interact with it. And because there isn't this crappy graphics or green screen behind the actor, you actually get more engrossed into the film. You don't have to make your mind forget that what's going on behind the actors isn't real, because in Prometheus it actually is. Now the absolute best bit of this film involves uh, Numi Rapisa's character and foreign object. I'm not going to say any more than that because that scene is brilliant and I don't want to ruin it for everyone, but I will say that I have not been so tense perhaps since the like, last three episodes of Luther on the BBC. That scene is just terrifying and I'll just let you enjoy it because it is brilliant. Now another thing that's brilliant about this film are the actors that are involved. We have Michael Fassbender who is perhaps the best actor in this film and his performance is just simply astounding. Uh, another actor in this that is brilliant is uh, Charlize Theron, except for the fact that near the end of the film she had this big reveal that was completely out of the blue and pretty much made no sense to the plot and the big reveal is so bad because it just feels like it's been slotted into the script just for the fun of it. There are more actors than just Fassbender and Theron, like you have uh, Rapace, you have uh, Idris Elba, you have amazing actors, but the only downside to having all these amazing actors is just that, all these actors. There's a certain scene in the film where they're taking part in this briefing and there are three rows of chairs complete of actors that are on this ship. However, saying that, in true alien fashion, not a lot of them are around for very long. Now this film is co-written by uh, Damon Lindelof, who I think is fantastic. He has been behind some of the best episodes of Lost, which I love. He was behind the last two Mission Impossible films, which I love. And he's connected to pretty much anything else concerning J.J. Abrams, who I love. And unfortunately, Damon Lindelof has been getting a lot of stick for his script for Prometheus. And the sole reason for this is, even though the first two acts of the film are absolutely incredible pieces of cinema, I mean that the tension is built so, so well that by the time something horrific actually happens, you are gripping the armrest so much that your fingers are turning white. And, but unfortunately, the final act does not live up to the first two parts of the film. Think of this, as you will, as the Mass Effect 3 of the film world. Now, I make this comparison because in Mass Effect 3, you are given this really, really intriguing, brilliant game that offers to answer all of your questions. But then when it comes to it, when the finale finally happens, you are left with more questions than you had 
at the beginning of the game. And this is exactly what Prometheus is. Throughout the film, you're given all these hints that you're going to find out all the questions that have cropped up in your mind throughout the two hours that you've been watching it. And then, unfortunately, the third act arrives. This tense thriller that has built up over time just devolves into this monster mash flick that feels jarring when you compare it to the rest of the film. And then it ends on perhaps the most pain in the ass thing, the hint of a sequel. So all the answers to all the questions that you have that you've built up throughout the entire runtime of this film have been left to possibly another film. But maybe in true Ridley Scott fashion in about 20 years time we'll get a new final cut of the film which may give us all the answers but then in a really really boring way. So a low Prometheus starts off incredibly promising. The end just cannot keep up with the amount of awesome that the beginning had. All of the bad things in the film were put there to sate the fanboys. Which is stupid really because the only reason that the fanboys are so angry at this film is because Ridley Scott teased them about it. He was the one that made them excited about it. If he had just left this whole is it a prequel, isn't it a prequel thing alone, then he would not be facing the angry backlash that he is now. So that was my review and next week in honour of, in my opinion, Ridley Scott's best film, we'll be looking at the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And if you don't know why that is connected to Ridley Scott's film, then you're an idiot. And <laughs> yeah, so uh, like, subscribe, visit wearethewritingpeople.co.uk, uh, read Do Androids Dream and I'll see you next week.